Welcome to this new video of Neuro Habits, the dorsal column medial and meniscus pathway. Why is it useful to learn this? Learning about the dorsal column medial and meniscus pathway can help us understand the origin of some disabilities. For example, it can help us guess where the problem might be if someone tells us they can feel dull pain but not sharp pain. And Last but not least, it can help us avoid being ignorant about one of the main ascending pathways. So let's go over the basic structure. It's very easy. You have three neurons, two synapses. One of the synapses occurs in the medulla, in either the nucleus cuneatus or in the nucleus gracilis, and the other synapse occurs in the thalamus, in the ventral postlateral nucleus of the thalamus. The start of the pathway is a tactile receptor or a proprioceptor, and the end of the pathway is in the postcentral gyrus of the parietal cortex. Let's go over this basic structure in a flowchart manner. So at the beginning, you have a sensory neuron, either above C8, like in the arms, or below C8, like in the legs. These fibers go up through the dorsal column and their first synapse in the medulla oblongata, at the nucleus cuneatus for the sensory neurons above C8, or at the nucleus gracilis for the sensory neuron below C8. Here, the fibers will cross over and ascend through the medial lemniscus to end in the ventral postlateral nucleus of the thalamus. This is the second synapse. Finally, these neurons will send their fibers through the corona radiata and end in the postcentral gyrus of the parietal cortex. Okay, so now it's time to look at what happens inside a real spinal cord. To do this, I will be using two textbooks that I really recommend because they have great pictures and great explanations. One of them is called Neuroanatomy by Duan Haynes. It has really great MRI pictures and diagrams. It's a really good textbook. The other one is The Human Brain by John Nolte. This one also has really, really incredible pictures, um, information and diagrams. It's a really good textbook as well. Okay, so now let's look at a diagram representation of the dorsal column medial meniscus pathway. Here you have the two sensory neurons, one from below C8, such as the legs, and one from above C8, such as the arms. The axons from the sensory neurons enter the spinal cord and go up through the fasciculus gracilis or through the fasciculus cuneatus. They go all the way up until a synapse in the caudal medulla in the nucleus gracilis for the fasciculus gracilis below C8, or in the nu nucleus cuneatus for the fibers that enter above C8. Okay, so now let's look at what happens inside the spinal cord. Here we are at the level L4 of the spinal cord, so we are below C8. The sensory neurons will send their fibers all the way to here, which is the fasciculus gracilis. The fibers will then ascend up all the way up to the medulla. Now let's look at what happens at the level of C7, which is above C8 of the spinal cord. So here you have the, fib the fibers that are coming up from the fasciculus gracilis, and here you have the fibers that are coming from the fasciculus cu cuneatus. Both sets of fibers will go up to the medulla. This is a section through the medulla. Here you can see the nucleus gracilis, and here you can see the nucleus cuneatus. Now let's look at what happens at the level of the caudal medulla. Here we can see that the fibers from the nucleus gracilis will decussate, that is, go across the midline, so on the other side of the spinal cord, to an area called the medial lemniscus. From there on, they will ascend all the way up. When you look at the fibers from the nucleus cuneatus, you see that they too cross the midline, but they end up in an area closer to the middle of the spinal cord, 
and they will ascend as well all the way up to the thalamus. Here you have the nucleus gracilis, and you can see the fibers going around, crossing over, and the fibers from the nucleus cuneatus, and the fibers from the nucleus cuneatus going around as well, all the way to the medial lemniscus, which is this big area right here. So here you have the medial lemniscus, both of them. Here you have the nucleus gracilis, both of them, and the nucleus cuneatus, both of them. From here on, the fibers will ascend all the way to the thalamus. So now let's look once again at what happens in this diagram. Here you have the medial lemniscus, which in the pons ends up being like this, and in the rostral midbrain ends up being like this. The fibers ascend through this medial lemniscus all the way up to the thalamus. I would like to help you get a structural understanding of what is happening here. Think of this as the fibers coming from my arms, okay? So here you have a fiber from a sensory neuron in my arm that gets into the spinal cord. From here on, it ascends to the fasciculus cuneatus all the way up to the medulla right here. At this level of the medulla, the sensory neuron will synapse on a new neuron, which is in the nucleus cuneatus. This new neuron will send its axon all the way across. It will decussate, go all the way across the midline, and then ascend all the way up to the thalamus. And on the other side of the, of the spinal cord. This will be done through the medial lemniscus. In order to visualize the medial lemniscus, imagine this as being um, the most central part of the, medial lem of the medial lemniscus. The fibers, as they ascend, they will rotate slightly, change orientation. And once they reach the right orientation, they will kind of drift more to the side of the spinal cord. The fibers that are ascending through the medial lemniscus will synapse in the VPL of the thalamus. There, those new neurons will send their axons that will radiate through the corona radiata and end in the postcentral gyrus of the parietal cortex. The orientation changes, 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 and then it's kind of like farther from the spinal cord. Now, let's look at what happens inside um, a real spinal cord. Here you have the medial lemniscus. Now, at the level of the pons, you see that the medial lemniscus has shifted. This is the medial lemniscus, and this is the other one. You see that the medial lemniscus has shifted orientation. Again, you have the legs. You have the fibers from the legs more around this area, and the fibers from the upper limbs, or the arms, more around this central area. And here, through the midbrain, you can still find the medial lemniscus here. You can see that, and you can see that it is farther from the from the middle part of the spinal cord, right? Now, as we said, the fibers from the dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway end up in the ventral postlateral nucleus of the thalamus. So now here we're looking at a section through the thalamus. Here you can find the fibers from the medial lemniscus ending up in the ventral postlateral nucleus of the thalamus, which is right here. This area is the ventral postlateral nucleus of the thalamus that you can find again right here. From the thalamus, the new axons will then go through the corona radiata and end up in the postcentral gyrus.